A ship makes three displacements in the following order. 1. 76 miles, 48 degrees north of east. 2. 50 miles, 56 degrees north of west. And 3. 47 miles south. Draw a clear diagram showing all three displacement vectors with respect to horizontal points. North, east, south, and west. So if we draw our first vector here in red, we're going to have a, a vector of magnitude 76 miles in a direction 48 degrees north of east. So we're going to have this. Uh, before we do that, we're going to label in north, east, west, and south. So when we go through our directions, we can do it more easily then. So here we know this angle is to be 48 degrees. Now, our second vector, shown here in blue, if we're adding with the tail tip method, we make an angle of 56 degrees north of west with respect to the horizontal axis. So if we add that to here, we're going to have a vector along those lines there. Making an angle here with respect to the horizontal of 56 degrees. Finally, our final vector is 47 miles south. So that's directed straight down. That's our third vector. And then our resultant vector and it goes and connects the starting point of vector 1 to the final point of vector 3. So this is our resultant vector here. So here's a diagram showing all three of our displacements being added together and all of them are with respect to the horizontal axis because within each we are drawing a small little portion of an axis here and just adding that onto the graph here where we're adding our vectors using the tail to tip method. So here's a diagram of the addition of 1, 2, and 3 and the result that it gives. Part B says find the x and y components of displacement D1. So if we have our axes and we now draw our vector 1 out, we know the angle here to be 48 degrees. And if we now want to calculate the x component, our D1, x, and or y component d1y we have to apply Sokotoa to this so we know what d is and we have our angle so to find d1 of x we're going to use cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent d1 of x over d now if we solve for d1 of x we would get d1 of x is equal to d cosine of theta if we plug in our given values we would have d1 of x is equal to 76 miles times the cos of 48 degrees. If we now evaluate this, we would find that the x component of d1 is equal to 51 miles. Now, for d1y, we're going to also apply Sokotoa to this and see that we're going to use sine of theta is equal to the opposite, d1y over the hypotenuse, d. If we now solve this for d1y, we would get d1y is equal to d sine theta. Now, if we plug in the values again, d1y is equal to 76 miles times the sine of 48 degrees. If we evaluate this out, we would find that y is equal to 56 miles. Find the x and y components of displacement d2. So if we go through this now and to solve for d2, we know that d2 makes a vector of this direction here because we're at 50 magnitude of 50 miles at a direction 56 degrees north of west. So use north, east, west and south. So it's 56 degrees north of west. So here's our 56 degree angle. And now we want to calculate 
D2X and D2Y for this. So once again, we're going to apply Sokotoa to this. So for D2X, we're going to have cosine of theta is equal to D2X over D. Now if we solve this out for D2X, we get D2X is equal to D cosine of theta. If we plug in our given values, D2X is equal to 50 miles times cosine of 56 degrees. If we now evaluate this out, we would find the magnitude to be 28 miles. But remember the direction that it's pointing. Our horizontal is pointing towards the left in the negative x direction. So we assign magnitude a negative value. So it's negative 28 miles then. Now for D2Y, we also apply Sokotoa. So we have sine of theta is equal to D2Y over the hypotenuse D. If we now solve this for D2Y, we have D2Y is equal to D sine theta. If we plug in our given values, D2Y is equal to 50 miles times sine of 56 degrees. If we now calculate that out, we would get a value of 41 miles. And since it is pointing in the positive y direction, it's assigned a positive value, so positive 41. Part D, find the x, y components of displacement D3. So once again, if we show our axes here, and we label them north, east, west, and south, we see that it's just 47 miles south. So we can see that there is no horizontal component on the basis of this. So we know that this is 0. And since it is pointing in the negative y direction with a magnitude of 47, the y component is negative 47 miles. E, find the magnitude of the resultant vector. Well, first we have to determine what are the components of our resultant vector. So the x component, if we do 51 plus a negative 28, gives us a magnitude of 23 miles and if we add 56 41 and negative 47 that will give us a magnitude of 50 miles now knowing that we have to solve for the magnitude of this vector off the basis of the sum of the sum of the d's x's and the sum of the dy's. In order to do that and to find this resultant magnitude of r, we have to apply the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that r squared is equal to the sum of dy squared plus the sum of the dx's squared. Now if we take the square root of both sides, we can get r alone so that we have r is equal to square root sum of dy squared plus the sum of dx squared. Put parentheses around that to not confuse that you're squaring the dy's before adding them up. So it's the addition of all the dy's then we're squaring that sum. So 23 is our x component and 50 is our y component. So when we plug these values into here, we would have r is equal to square root of 50 miles squared plus 23 miles squared. Now, if we square this out, we would have 2,500 square miles plus 529 square miles. If we add those together, we get the square root of 3,029 miles squared. And if we take the square root of that, we find that 
our resultant magnitude is of the order of 55 miles. So here we have just solved for the magnitude of the resultant vector to be 55 miles. Part F says find the direction of the resultant vector. So now we want to know the direction that our resultant vector makes with respect to the x-axis. So if we show our axes here, once again show our resultant vector r, and we have our sum of our dx's and the sum of our dy's is shown here. We want to determine what this theta is here. Now you can use sine or cosine, but I'm going to use uh, tan of theta because we, these were the first two initial ones that we calculated out. In case there was a mistake when we were calculating out the magnitude of r, we will skip over that mistake because if we did mess up with one of the dy's, the mistake and points would carry throughout the entire problem. But if you made an additional mistake in solving for the r, that would also hurt you when you're going into later on problems. So we're going to stick with the first things that we calculated here. So we're going to use tan of theta is equal to the opposite, which is sum of the dy's over the adjacent, which is sum of dx's. Now to solve for theta on its own, we're going to take the tan inverse of both sides, which gives us theta is equal to the tan inverse of the sum of the dy's over the sum of the dx's. If you now plug in the values that we have previously calculated for, so the sum of the dx's is 23, and the sum of the dy's is 50, we get a 50 over 23, each of these are in miles. We now take the tan inverse of that, we would find that the direction with respect to the x-axis would be 65 degrees. So here we have calculated out all the components of the three vectors. We have added them up, found the resulting components. From that, using the Pythagorean theorem, we determine the magnitude of our resultant vector. And by applying SOHCAHTOA, we found that the direction of the resultant vector with respect to the x-axis is 65 degrees.